The original idea for Boys Harbor came from the Optimist Club of downtown Houston who built a summer camp in the early 30s for underprivileged children. Based on the camp's success, they decided to create a permanent home for at-risk children. In the mid-40s, former Texas Governor Ross Sterling and his wife agreed to donate their large home to the Optimist Club if they would purchase the adjacent land. Subsequently, the mansion became Boys Harbor, a home for underprivileged boys. Today, the harbor's model of residential care has evolved from a large institutional structure to a series of small family homes, and the program now serves both boys and girls. The original purpose to provide a safe haven for dependent and neglected children remains unchanged. Our objective is to provide children with the highest quality of residential care in a home setting with a family environment. Children receive shelter, food, clothing, counseling, medical care, transportation, and recreational services. We also help children learn how to overcome the challenges that they face by providing them a family-style environment and education and the opportunity to learn the skills that they need to be successful when they leave the harbor. Some of our children come from the Child Protective Services, others are private referrals. In both cases, the children are good kids who need the structure and the family environment the harbor offers at-risk children. Accomplishing our objective requires strong volunteer leadership from our board of directors and broad-based support, both volunteer and financial, from the community. The Harbor has worked hard to put together a team of dedicated and experienced staff, ranging from our senior management team to the house parents, who are mentors and role models for our children. The volunteer board of directors includes men and women from a variety of different backgrounds. The combination of a qualified and experienced staff, a dedicated board of directors, and a demonstrated history of providing residential services all contribute to the success of Boys and Girls Harbor. We're also licensed by the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services. We're recognized by the Better Business Bureau and accredited by the Council on Accreditations. We develop a comprehensive plan to evaluate issues impacting Boys and Girls Harbor. The process includes board member teams to monitor and report on the plan throughout the year. Our major focus areas includes the population of children, served by the harbor, fundraising, board selection, and human resources. We also look at secession planning, facilities, the harbor's on-campus charter school, finances, land development, community relations, and marketing. The strategic plan provides direction and serves as a vehicle to monitor the effectiveness of the organization. Each year, the harbor conducts an external audit. The audit report and our IRS Form 990 are posted on the Harbor's website. The best measure of success for our program was obtaining national voluntary accreditation under the standards established by the Council on Accreditation, or COA. We have also met the licensing standards of the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services, and we're a Better Business Bureau accredited charity. Using the COA standards, as a benchmark, we're able to demonstrate transparency in the success of our program. There is often confusion between Boys and Girls Harbor and other programs with similar sounding names. We're a local, nonprofit, charitable organization with a small development office in Houston and a campus in Morgans Point, Texas, where we provide residential care. We are not affiliated with a national organization. The majority of our funding comes from local foundations, corporations, and individuals. Another common misinterpretation is who we serve. The harbor is licensed as a general residential operation, not a residential treatment center. We are not a program for children already involved with the juvenile justice system, have serious mental health or acting out behaviors, or need substance abuse rehabilitation.
One of our major accomplishments is our sustainability as a local charity, in part because of the wonderful philanthropic spirit of our community. We've been able to sustain our program during years when the local economy was challenged for everyone. We're proud of the Harbor Academy, a charter school on our campus. Our charter school makes it possible for children who were once struggling academically to catch up to their peers and go on to graduate from high school. We've also obtained national voluntary accreditation by the Council on Accreditation. The process served as a catalyst for change that built on our organization's strengths and helped us achieve better results in all areas. Historically, funding has always been a challenge because a significant number of our children were referrals from Child Protective Services, and their reimbursement rate is less than half our actual cost to provide 24-hour care. Pending changes in the state's foster care program will most likely result in a future reduction of state funding for the harbor. Another challenge is recruiting and maintaining the highest quality house parents for each of our residential homes. Caring for eight children 24 hours a day, seven days a week, can be a demanding and often stressful environment. This is a major challenge for all residential care providers. Additional resources would allow us to make improvements to many of our older buildings and build an all-face chapel on our campus. We would also expand our marketing and community outreach programs. As a small local charity, we do not have the visibility in the community that is shared by national organizations. With more resources, we could upgrade our website, print materials, and explore new ways to use social media to reach a larger audience and provide for our children. The harbor is licensed to care for children from ages 2 through 18 years. However, we currently focus on children from ages 5 to 18. Serving children below the age of 5 brings into play additional standards and changes the staffing ratio, making this a population we are currently not able to serve. Another group of children that often require additional services are those who still need assistance after they reach the legal majority and are no longer eligible for public funding. There's the need for a structured independent living program to provide guidance and support to help children make the transition from a residential care program to living independently.